Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's WW Newscast. Today is Wednesday, January 12th, 2011. I am Lou Mangello, host of the WW Radio Show and author of the Walt Disney World Trivia Books, the audio guides to Walt Disney World, and I am the publisher of Celebrations Magazine. This is, as I said, the WDW Newscast. You can join us every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern at wdwnewscast.com for a live video broadcast and interactive chat where we talk about Walt Disney World news and rumors, and you can be part of the broadcast and the discussion by asking and answering questions inside the chat room. If you can't make it, that's okay. You can always catch every episode of the newscast as well as more of our videos uh, by subscribing to and commenting on the YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Radio. You can also get notified of updates, other breaking newscasts, and other live shows that I decide to do from here and from time to time by following me on Twitter. I'm twitter.com slash Radio, or by friending the WW Radio friend page over on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash Radio. This week's newscast, as in every week, is brought to you by our friends over at touringplans.com. They are the research team behind the unofficial guide to Walt Disney World. And over at touringplans.com, you can find a crowd calendar telling you really the best parks to visit, the most crowded parks to avoid every day of the year for the next 365 days. They tell you how crowded the parks are going to be. They've got touring plans for all the Disney theme parks, depending on how you go and who you go with. So if you're going by yourself or with grandma or with young kids, they've got a touring plan for you. And don't forget, you can also take touring plans with you into the parks. They've got the lines application, which will show you the wait times, fast pass times, lots and lots more. Perfect if you're trying to plan out your day in the Walt Disney World theme parks. To find out more, read their blog and so much more, go ahead and go visit touringplans.com. So again, it's been a relatively quiet week in Walt Disney World, unless you are a runner, because this past week was the annual Walt Disney World Marathon Weekend, and it continues to grow by leaps and bounds, getting bigger and better than ever. This year, approximately 54,000 people took part in at least one of the weekend's races. 7,000 ran the marathon, 27,000 ran the half, 5,000 were goofy enough, literally, to do both and did the Goofies Race and a Half Challenge. That's like 39.3 very long miles uh, in just a couple of days. Runners came from all 50 United States as well as 60 other countries around the world. Again, this has really become uh, sort of a signature event for Disney's Wide World of Sports and, and Marathon events. Uh, Something else that took place this year a lot of people didn't know about was that in addition to those people who are running in Walt Disney World, the Disney's Heroes Race was run in Baghdad. On Saturday, more than 300 U.S. military personnel ran in a Disney-sponsored half-marathon event that featured a simultaneous start with the half-marathon that took place in Florida, and there were actual video links between the two races. So uh, I love to see... Disney bringing some of that magic and some of these events from Walt Disney World over to those people who are stationed overseas, giving them a little something uh, to enjoy over the weekend as well. Just as quickly as the marathon is over, registration is getting ready to open for the 2012 Walt Disney World Marathon. That's going to open in March 2011. This year, or the next year actually, it's going to be a little different because in addition to the marathon, the half marathon... The Goofy Race and a Half Challenge, the Buzz and Woody Best Friends 5K with an awesomely cool little rubber medal, and the Mickey Marathon's Kids Fest, there's also going to be a marathon relay. Disney hasn't released any details about that yet, but they are coming soon. I think that is going to be something that's going to entice a lot of people who have been scared or concerned about running a half or a full marathon, give them the opportunity to come out and run. And the one thing that I really noticed this year and something that's been progressing, I think, over the past few years is that the marathon weekend really has gone from an athletic event to a social event because people who are not runners, people who are not athletes, myself included, have started participating 
in these marathon events. Sometimes it's baby steps with the 5K. Some people jump right in to the half marathon. I met a ton of people this weekend who, for the first time, got themselves literally up off the couch, trained some a little, some a little bit more, and decided to run a, their first half marathon. Or others that went out and decided to run their first full marathon. But for them, they obviously weren't trying to win. They were, you know, they, they had no uh, lofty goals of trying to come in first or second or third. But it was about the personal challenge and the social aspect. And that's what really I've seen develop over the last couple of years. You know, the marathon tents now at three o'clock in the morning before the runners go to the corrals are filled not just with people who are stretching, getting ready to run, but with people who are out there cheering them on even before they get to the starting line. And throughout the entire course, there are people cheering, whether they know somebody on the course, whether they're cheering a group, whether they're cheering for a charity, whatever it might be, the course is lined from beginning to end. And I will tell you, as somebody that has run in a half marathon back in 2008, how important, how inspiring, and how motivating that is to see a friendly face or even a stranger's face on the course, but calling out your name that they read on your bib as you're running by. I'm telling you, that helps you get through that next mile, two, three miles, whatever it might be. The other thing that I've noticed too as well is that people are not only running the races for themselves, but they're running the races for other people as well because it really has turned into a huge charity event. And I think a lot of people don't realize that the marathon itself benefits the leukemia and lymphoma. Uh, Disney raises about $7 million a year through this uh, participant and volunteer donations along with the team and training and things that they do. But a lot of individuals and groups and Disney communities have banded together and for their own causes, gone out and raised a lot of money. This year, we finally formally, in quotes, put together the WDW Radio Running Team to benefit the Dream Team Project, where we raise money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. We actually granted a wish this weekend. Some of us from the Dream Team had a chance to meet the child and her family from a wish that we sponsored. And I can tell you what an incredibly rewarding experience that is to see the result of all the fundraising. All Ears raised about $46,000 over the weekend. Uh, there's team and training, there's countless others. So it, it's, it's a personal challenge, it's a community thing, it's a social thing, and it's also a lot of good being done for others as well. So yeah, people in the chat room talking about uh, a lot of big money, the dream team, uh, you know, granting the wish that's something we're going to be doing a lot more now and giving you guys a chance to be involved. We're already planning next year for expanding what we're going to be doing with the WDW radio running team. we got a late start this year. Uh, next year, we're going to get an earlier start, give you a chance to participate, whether you are a runner, a walker, or just want to come out and cheer and help fundraise for the Make-A-Wish Foundation as well. Um, Tacey's already saying she wants to join the Dream Team. Um, I'll put a link uh, in the comments section over on YouTube for to the Dream Team Project page. That'll have a link to the Running Team page as well. You can also send me an email directly at lou at www.radio.com and I'll forward your information to the person who's handling the Running Team events for this and next year. A lot of people want to come out. They're saying they want to volunteer. That's the other thing too. I have to give huge kudos to the Walt Disney World cast members and volunteers that were out from the, the wee hours of the morning, lined the entire course, were handing out water and the, the energy shots and were cheering people on and were standing out in the cold and were there handing out medals at the end. Uh, you guys do a phenomenal job and I know that you guys take time out of your own personal schedule to go out and do that. And again, it is so very much appreciated by everybody who runs and cheers uh, and everybody who is involved. Uh, Jeremy was out there. He's in the chat room now saying cheering was a lot of fun this year. That's something else that I think has started to grow is that people are coming out to the event not just because they want to race, but because they want to cheer, uh, not just because they know their husband or wife or daughter or dad may be running, but because they know how important it is to cheer on the runners, but because, again, it is that social experience. There is something to be said for getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning, 
and getting out to the Epcot parking lot around 3, 3.30 and meeting the runners and taking pictures with them and cheering them on and then racing your way to the Magic Kingdom, getting your spot, cheering people along the route, then hightailing it over to Animal Kingdom or Epcot or the finish line or whatever it might be. And you find yourself getting so excited and cheering on perfect strangers, staring at trying desperately to read is when you get old like me, it gets a lot harder to read their names on their bibs as they run by Disney. Quick aside, if you could make those names a little or a lot bigger, it's so important to hear your name called out by a perfect stranger. Making it big for old guys like me to read would be very, very helpful. Uh, but there are, yeah, so Mary J 76 says, the best sign I saw was, hello, complete stranger, I'm proud of you. Uh, there was a lot of that. There were people who were out there who knew nobody but who made up signs or given high fives or were handing out, you know, food and water, doing anything they could to help out, you know, motivating, running alongside people that they saw might have been struggling just a little bit. We're going to talk about this. and We're going to sort of recap the marathon weekend on the WW radio show a lot more again. But that change that's gone on and I've already seen a lot of people saying, yeah, I hear how great it is. Or, hey, I hear that, Lou, you with your short little stubby legs, you ran a half marathon in 2008. I know that I can do this. I want to get off the couch. I want to lose some weight. I want to give myself that personal challenge. And I'm seeing that happening uh, not just on the course this year and in the tents and even after the race at the meet of the month, but in the chat room as well. Disney Casey is saying the whole thing is truly amazing. Uh, Trace is in the chat room as well, too. Uh, Murphy FKD1 says, this is why Disney is so awesome. Trumpeteer says, he or she likes being able to track people online. We actually had somebody who was tracking everybody from the running team. But the nice thing Disney does too is if you know somebody who's running but you can't make it out there, you can put in, you can go to the website, put in your phone number, and get updates as to where they are on the course, what their pace is, how they're doing, and of course, when they finish. Uh, as speaking of the WW Radio running team, to everybody who participated, I'm so proud of all you guys because every single runner from the team finished the half or full marathon this year. And that is a huge accomplishment to each of you individually. And I am so, so very proud of all of you and everybody who came out to run and cheer on not just our running team, but all the runners out there as well. Zeus New York says, can you walk the race? Uh, a lot of people do, Zeus. As long as you keep a 16-minute mile pace, you will not get swept by one of the sweeper buses. A 16-minute mile may sound daunting, but trust me, you can do it. It's a fast walk, or if you alternate walking and running. There are many, many websites and uh, places you can find online that will help you sort of train for that. If you are not a runner and more of a walker, you desperately, you, you definitely can do it. Uh, when I trained for the half marathon, my longest run was only about six or seven miles. But I'm telling you, when you get out on that course, you see the fireworks, you see the characters and all the entertainment, that and all the people running around you will definitely carry you to the finish line, I, I can assure you. Uh, people are also talking about the couch to 5K. So if, if you literally are a couch potato and you want to run, there is a training regimen that you can do to get you off the couch and to the finish line for your first 5K. A great way to start yourself and sort of get into the running, especially if you are not a runner. Um, some people already looking, already booked their rooms for next year uh going to old key west says 16 minute pace wonder if you can do it i'm telling you again that you can and there's a lot of people out there uh who are who didn't train very much or some people who have um you know the inability to to run but can walk and there's people from every age group from like 14 year old kids to 80 year old grandmothers going out there and do it so i'm sh I, I assure you once you sign up that's the hardest part and then Everything else will carry you uh, along the way. You know, but if you're not, if the, the Walt Disney World Marathon maybe doesn't fit into your schedule or something that maybe doesn't appeal to you, there's a lot of other endurance series events that Disney puts on throughout the year. Registration is now open for the Expedition Everest Challenge. I'm so happy to say that they moved it up to Saturday, May 7th. They had done it uh, in September a couple of years ago. This past year, they did it in the middle of the summer really tough to walk through Animal Kingdom, let alone run through it. This one is now uh, Saturday, May 7th. It's a 5K. It's an obstacle course. It's a scavenger hunt. That's a ton of fun. I've done that a couple of times. Really enjoyed it. March 5th 
is the Champion 5K during ESPN the weekend. Uh, again, that's a 5K. It's like three point something miles. That's a lot of fun as well. The Princess Half Marathon also changed weekends this year. That's now from Friday, February 25th through Sunday, February 27th. Just because it's called Princess, it's not for ladies only. It's a princess event, but guys can run too. And if you, like many guys, want to don the princess crown and, and tutu or snow white outfit, you can do it as well. There's a half marathon. There's a family 5K, so the whole family can be involved and the royal family kids races. Now, to show you how popular these events are, the princess half marathon is already 91% full. The royal family 5K and kids races are 50% full. You can go to my Disney Marathon slash princess to find out more, watch video and see some photos from last year's events. Something else that began last year, continues this year, is the wine and dine and half marathon. So if you are a food and wine aficionado, uh, the wine and dine might be for you. That takes place between September 30th and October 1st. Registration is going to open for that on February 14th. So what better way to celebrate Valentine's Day than signing up your loved one for the Wine and Dine Half Marathon? What's great about this race is that you not only get to run a half marathon through the Disney theme parks at night, but there's great entertainment along the way. And the icing on the cake is that you finish in Epcot, in World Showcase, during the Food and Wine Festival. There's an after hours food and wine, uh, wine and dine marathon party that you can go to if you're a runner where you can buy a ticket to if you are just there to cheer or just want to be part of the event. Um, a lot of fun. A lot of people did it last year. So a little different r running at night. But again, it's that whole social aspect uh, of, of all these different races. Uh, Thaddeus Toad is talking about <clears throat> excuse me, how there was a lot of criticism about the half marathon. I think because it was the first one, they were definitely ironing out a lot of kinks. I do know that they talked to and they surveyed a lot of people about what they liked and disliked. So my hope is that they are going to tweak the marathon and the, the post-race event accordingly to make it even better than it was last year. Um, Doc Terminus is saying another perk for runners. If you register early enough, you can get nicely discounted rate for certain resorts. Great tip as well. Uh, people are talking about how some of these events are really crowded. Again, I think that's a testament maybe to how popular they are becoming. And maybe that's why they're starting to add additional races throughout um, the year as well. Don't forget, there's also races in Disneyland. So if you want to do a coast to coast, you get this really sweet coast to coast medal. If you do the coast to coast halves or the coast to coast full or goofy, if you are truly goofy or dopey. Um, one thing I want to ask the people who are in the chat room and if you're watching on the YouTube channel is, you know, for years, <clears throat> excuse me, we've, we've been seeing a lot and hearing a lot more about these races. They're covered in podcasts, in, in videos, and so much more. Uh, hearing about what a good time everybody's having, not just if you're a runner, but if you're there to cheer as well. I can tell you that this past weekend's event was probably my favorite event to go to as a participant simply to cheer uh, because I knew so many people who were running because I had a better idea of where to go and how to cheer. We had signs and had such a good time just on the sidelines cheering and, and even better when we saw friendly faces running by or people in costume. Does hearing about all this motivate you or inspire you at all to want to come down or up or over to Walt Disney World for the marathon weekend, whether it's for the social aspect or for the running aspect? Uh, Some people are saying yes, absolutely does. Uh, everybody is saying yes. I'd like so, Nolan wants to come down and cheer. Nolan, you got to come down and cheer with the running team this year. Um, yeah, everybody's saying you know definitely. I definitely want to come down because they're seeing again. We're be, we're able to capture that experience for them. Let them see it. Let them share it with them. And again, it's such a wonderful social aspect that had nothing to do with riding attractions or yes, dare I say, even eating um but it was about the the fun of and it's not really fun but the fun of getting up at two o'clock and getting out there and taking the monorail and seeing people and then for the next two or three days later applauding the people as they come by wearing their medals clanging through adventureland with pride because they certainly did earn them um betsy is saying what a fun uh fun weekend it is becky saying it cheering was awesome and inspirational 
And she's saying she might even try running it someday. So that's what I like to hear. Not just because I want to see Becky run and you should do it because it is an amazing experience. But other people who are saying, yeah, this looks like fun. And you know what? I think I can do it. I think I can get up and lose some weight and raise some money and make a difference, not just in my life, but in the lives of others as well. I think this does, and people in the chat room are saying, I want to hear people in YouTube comment as well, that it is another reason to come down to Walt Disney World for possibly either a second or a third or another vacation because it's such a different experience than going down to experience the attractions or go down for the holidays. Um, it is that social event that it brings with it. Uh, the other question I had too is, would you like to see other events like this? So we've got the princess, we've got ESPN, we've got Expedition Everest. We used to have the Tower of Terror. Now we have Wine and Dine. Would you like to see additional events like this scattered throughout the years? So say, hey, I just happen to be coming down, you know, during this time. I'd love to have a 5K that I could do with my family, uh, you know, because maybe I can't come down because of school for uh, the marathon weekend or for Expedition Everest weekend. If so, what kind of themed events would you like to see? I think Tower of Terror was a great themed event. I think there's lots of opportunities to do something for Halloween, to do attraction themes event. Um, Amy Falk Peterson says a wild run through Animal Kingdom, a Fantasmic theme, a Space Mountain theme, a Star Wars run. Wonder Alice. I, I think that could be a great addition to an already fun, packed few Star Wars weekends. Great idea. Um, Small World One says a bike ride. Something else maybe that people hadn't thought of wanting to do, especially for people who do go out and bike a lot. Um, Haunted Mansion, always a winner for Trace. Um, Star Wars, yeah, definitely a lot of people saying Star Wars, a pirate run, certainly a pirate-themed run, especially with Pirates of the Caribbean 4 coming out soon, uh, could be a great option. Keith Barrett says a Fort Wilderness run. Talk about getting people to somewhere that a lot of people don't visit unless they're staying there. Uh, there's some beautiful scenery, some great views of Bay Lake and the contemporary and the Magic Kingdom from Fort Wilderness. Um, a river country run. Bring back the Tower of Terror 13K, says Jeremy. Um, a triathlon. Yeah, they're, they do have a triathlon there. There's a, a, a Toy Story run, a resort run, a Fort Wilderness run, an Osborne Lights race with shoes that light up, says Murphy FKD. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity uh, and again, I think the 5Ks and the 13Ks are great ways to sort of let people sort of dip their toe into the the big pool of endurance running. But again, a lot of people say, you know what, I'm going to do it. If Luke can do a 5K with his tiny little stubby legs and no training, I can certainly do it as well. And this in the past few years has certainly been a testament to that. Um, speaking of running, no, I'm not saying I am, but the WW Radio running team, definitely stay tuned for some announcements, not only about the marathon events coming next year, but a couple of special things that we have planned for those of you who may want to participate as runners, as cheers, and maybe for some of you who have been throwing out some of these other ideas, there's a couple of things we're working on for this and next year. Definitely stay tuned. Got a lot of fun and exciting things planned, uh, especially if you're not an athlete. There may be a way for you guys to come out and have some fun as well. Uh, I'd love to keep this conversation going uh, in the comments section over at youtube.com slash WW radio. Tell me, are these events is hearing about all these events enough to motivate you to come out and make a special trip? If so, are you coming just to cheer or are you coming to maybe get off the couch and run for yourself? Um, does the idea of raising money for charity appeal to you? whether it's something that's personal to you or something we're doing for the running team or team in training, whatever it might be, there's such a great opportunity to take what you're doing and help those who really need it. Um, give me more of your suggestions about events like these, themed events like Tower of Terror and Wine and Dine. Be creative. Uh, let me see. Let me hear some of the things that you have out there uh, as far as uh, creative ideas for different types of endurance events and post them in the comment section. I'll definitely check in quite often, comment there as well. Uh, don't forget, if you don't get a chance to watch the newscast live every Wednesday at 7.30, you can watch and comment in YouTube. Don't forget to come by and visit the website over at www.radio.com. 
There you can find the podcast as well as in iTunes. There's also a blog, photo gallery, videos, fun, friendly, safe discussion forums. You can order signed copies of my Walt Disney World trivia books and audio guides on CD or download. You can get a link to download the free WW Radio iPhone app as well as a link over to celebrationspress.com. If you want to call into the voicemail and be heard on the air, please feel free to call in at 888-703-2171. Or if you want to email me directly, it's lou at www.radio.com. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at, at Lou Mangiello. Or come by and join the WW Radio friend page over on facebook.com slash WW Radio. That is going to do it for this week. I hope to see you guys next week in the chat commenting in the discussion forum. Stay tuned for other WW Radio live broadcasts coming soon, including Wednesday, January 19th. I'll be broadcasting live from the christening cruise of the Disney Dream. That's Wednesday, January 19th, starting probably about 8 o'clock. Stay tuned to Twitter for more updates and exact times. Big thanks again. Go out to the WW Newscast sponsor, touringplans.com. Visit them for to download lines, to get touring plans, and so, so much more. Again, that's touringplans.com. And, of course, huge congratulations go out to everybody who participated in this year's 5K half or full marathon. If you ran, if you cheered, if you volunteered, congratulations and thanks to all of you. To anybody that's even thinking about registering for your first 5K or half or full, I'm telling you, the hardest part is just putting your name, signing your name up, and registering for it, the rest will come easily, and I guarantee it will be an experience in Walt Disney World unlike any that you've ever had and something that you will never, ever forget. Take it from somebody that's been there and certainly feels that way. Thanks to all of you who are watching in the chat room and are being part of the conversation. Thanks to all of you who are watching on YouTube. So until next week, see ya.